Stone Cold. Link five. I'd seen lots of movies where the character who's on the road picks up casual work in towns as he's passing through, washing dishes, cutting firewood, sweeping. I couldn't believe that in a city the size of London, it might be impossible for a guy to find that sort of work. I mean, the place is packed with restaurants, cafes and kebab houses, not counting all the pubs. During my two weeks in Wharfdale Road, I must have tried 200 of them, starting with those in the King's Cross area. I got nowhere, nowhere at all. As the days passed, I widened the area of my search. And by halfway through the second week, I'd been as far north as St John's Wood and south into Lambeth. I'd tramped the narrow little streets of Soho and the boulevards of South Kensington from early morning. I thought potential employers might be impressed by my willingness to be out and about early till late at night. I'd offered my services in sleazy, greasy cabs and posh hotels and everything in between until my feet felt bruised and I could hardly drag myself out of bed in the morning. I walked everywhere to save money. I lived on cheese rolls and tea, but I was down to nine quid and some change when Ratface came for his rent. It was Friday night, eight o'clock. I'd just got in. The room was freezing cold and I was treating myself to a quick burst of the cash, cash gobbling electric fire before bed when there was this knock at the door. I opened up and it was him. He said two words, evening and rent. I looked at him. It's only Friday, I said. I'm paid until Monday. He shook his head. Friday's rent day, sunshine. But I moved in on a Monday, I protested, and I paid two weeks. That makes the room mine until Sunday night. He moved so quickly I hadn't time to step back. One second there was a yard of space between us, and the next he had a bunch of my shirt in his fist, and his face was an inch from mine. Listen, sunshine, he hissed. The room's mine. I make the rules around here and the rent's due. If you got it, pay up. If you haven't, I'll give you five minutes to pack your stuff and get out. He shoved me and followed me in, leaving the door open. I tried to reason with him, told him I was waiting a decision by the DSS. He laughed. You're waiting, son. He snarled. I'm not. I said I was looking for work and pointed out I'd been quiet and kept the room tidy. I didn't know what I was saying, really. I was that desperate, but it was no good. He told me to pack my bag and stood there with his arms folded while I did it. When I'd finished, I brushed past him on my way to the door and said, I'll have you for this. Sooner or later, one way or another, I'll have you. His laughter rang in my ears as I went down the stairs. And that's how I came to join them, the homeless kids I'd seen everywhere on my travels, the kids I'd given change to a week ago when I thought things were bound to work out. I was one of them now, poised at the top of that downward spiral. <laughs>